Rajaj Ha, along with my ACS colleagues, Dr. Kaushik Natarajan and Dr. Meher Ha, welcome you to today's ACS Science Talk session. Just to update you on the upcoming ACS Science Talk, please visit our ACS in India webpage and register for the different sessions. We have also uploaded the past lecture recordings on the ACS Science Talk virtual library. Please feel free to visit, like, subscribe, and share among the community. The journal ACS, ESNT, and Water has an open call for paper from the South Asian authors, and the submission deadline is August 31st. Please share this information into the community. To keep you updated with the latest research findings and the product launches at ACS, we have a monthly newsletter, ACS Insights India. Subscribe to it for free. We'll provide the link into the chat box later. And to begin with the scientific session, it's a great pleasure to have Professor Geeta Rani with us. So Professor Geeta Rani is an associate professor in the Department of Inorganic and Physical Chemistry, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. She obtained her PhD from IIT Madras in 2012, following which she was an Alexander von Humboldt Fellow at the University of Würzburg, Germany. Subsequently, Professor Geeta Rani joined ICER Kolkata as an assistant professor before moving to the IPC Department of Indian Institute of Science. Her research interest involves around the development of main group catalysts for organic transformations, synthesis of symmetrical and unsymmetrical diboranes, and application of main group polymers, a glimpse of which she'll be sharing with us today. Professor Geeta Rani is the recipient of numerous awards and fellowship, including the SERB Women Excellence Award in 2020, Nasi Young Scientist Platinum Jubilee Award in 2019, Young Scientist Medal 2019 by Indian National Science Academy, and DST Inspire Faculty Award 2015, to name a few. She also holds editorial positions in several journals of international repute. Before Professor Geeta Rani starts, a couple of instructions for our audience. Please post your questions into the Q&A tab. Avoid putting questions into the chat box. And in case of any internet interruptions, please stay with us. Now, I would like to invite Professor Geeta Rani to deliver her talk. I'll stop sharing. Yeah. My slides are visible. Uh, yeah, the then? slides are visible and you are loud and clear. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you, Ajay, for your kind introduction and good morning and good evening to one and all. So today I'll be talking about uh, cobalt and heterocyclic carbene complexes for carbon boron bond formation reactions. As a chemist, actually, I get to um, see this I, uh, periodic table, which was published uh, in, uh, in the year of 2019 for the International Year of the Periodic Table. Uh, this attracted me a lot because it says that uh, there are, um, although we know there are more than, um, more, more elements are present, but these 90 natural elements that actually makes everything in our life. And this periodic table looks, um, gives us picture that uh, what are the elements present and how much quantity it is available in the earth crust. So I always uh, admired with this one. And before we go to design any chemistry based on that, one should actually keep these things in mind and then look for an uh, availability of the elements in the earth crust. And then we can go for the designing of the catalyst. So with this one, I just begin my uh, work presentation as it, the title says that it is for the carbon boron bond formation reaction. There are several organic transformations which are available for the, uh, um, uh, for the carbon carbon coupling reactions. To name a few, there is a CH activation reactions and um, also there are some coupling carbon carbon coupling reactions, metathesis reaction and so on. The one important of such type of uh, uh, reagent, which we can actually use it for a coupling reaction is the uh, carbon boron bond. Uh, I mean, compounds having a carbon boron uh, bond where the carbon is going to be a nucleophile by which we can actually attain many uh, kind of transformations. Here I mentioned that there are, um, there are several type of transformations are available like hydroboration, diboration, and carboborylation, dehydrogenative borylations, and variety of substrates can be employed to get the carbon boron bond formed uh, bonded uh, uh, products. 
and here is the list of reagents which we can we can actually employ for the uh, uh, for the synthesis of organoborane compounds to name a few there are pinacol borane catechol borane and uh, bispinacol etiborane etc when you consider the borylation reactions there are two possible ways one can expect that the reaction might proceed there is there there might be a possibility of the borone reagent to add across the met, uh, across the metal atom via the oxidative addition in which the borane reagent uh, added to the metal and give increase the oxidation state of the metal ion and you get uh, generally metal boryl complexes this is very common in the other uh, transition elements which belongs to the 4d and 5d metals but very less common in the 3d metal atoms the other type of transformation is transmetallation where you can uh, where you generate a um, metal alkoxide complex which upon reaction with diborane reagents gives this uh, metal boryl complex this kind of transmetallations are generally uh, very common for the 3d metal atom metal atoms when you think about a carbon boron bond formation reaction and go back to the literature there are plenty of examples available with the noble metals for any kind of transformation and in particular for the carbon boron bond forming reactions to name few that the c very well known cx borylation was achieved using a palladium catalyst and the most common ch borylation was used mainly with the iridium as a catalyst now what is that uh, what is that one can think of using a base metal as a catalyst which can be an alternative for a noble metals why one should be also interested in base metals they may be less they are less toxic and they available uh, uh, more in earth and they are also environmentally friendly not only that they they have actually excellent reactivity and we can actually tune the reactivity by selecting a suitable ligand systems so the tuning of ligand is uh, very important when we talk about a base metal catalyst and here are few examples the choices of ligand which would actually give the reactivity compared to the noble metal atoms for i i listed only the metal atom belongs to the ba i mean base metal catalyst and which has shown a very um, improved selectivity as well as efficiency for a particular type of reactions there are different type of ligand systems like iminopyridine or pinser type of ligand systems which with the iron complex this has been shown a uh, efficient one for the olefin olefin polymerization and hydrogenation of alkenes when compared to the noble metal catalyst and similar way there are also chiral bidentate phosphine ligand systems as well as there are examples with the beta diketaminoto ligands and also now recently the n heterocyclic carbene ligands also playing an important role in the development of base metal catalyst since um, i am interested in cobalt as a uh, catalyst for many kind of transformations here is a overview of simple n heterocyclic carbene complexes with the base metals particularly in the carbon boron bond formation if you take it then uh, the first one is the copper nhc complex which has been explored quite well for variety of transformations as you can see here that it has been known for aryl halide borylation alkyl halide borylation co2 reduction as well as the diborylation and um, uh, borylation of alpha beta unsaturated compounds etc etc so the nhc coordinated copper complex has well established in the literature and it has uh, proven to be efficient than the uh, noble metal complex uh, metal noble metal catalyst what about the other ligand systems with the other metal uh, i mean nhc with the other metal ions there are few examples with the nickel nhc complexes for ch activation as well as the cf ccl activations uh, carbon halide bond activations where the ims2 nickel uh, compound was used as a catalyst and there is also report on the hydroboration of uh, vinyl arenes 
the zinc is uh, very well known for the alkyl halide borylation as well as the aryl halide boryl activation with the NHC as a ligand system. And iron NHC complex has been well known for the uh, CH activation of um, heteroarenes. Recently, there is a report on cobalt NHC complexes where this is a cobalt alkoxide NHC, NHC supported cobalt alkoxide complex, which has been reported for the CH borylation as well CH borylation of um, arenes and then CH, boryl, uh, CH borylation of heteroarenes. Now, my interest is on cobalt. So it is, it's not uh, that there are no literature evidences for the cobalt with the, for with cobalt as a catalyst for the borylation reactions. There are plenty of examples and the one begin with the, uh, the, the main reaction where they found that, that there is an interaction between a cobalt complex which can react with B2Cat2 and gives the uh, cobalt PME3Bcat compound. This was the first report where uh, they have shown that there is a definite interaction. I mean, there is the, the B2 cat can react with cobalt complex and followed by that the monoboryl compound was isolated with the pincer type of ligand systems. After, for, after this, there were plenty of examples with the ligand systems which I listed earlier and having cobalt in plus one oxidation state, immunopyridine they have achieved several kind of, here are some of the cobalt catalyst with the typical ligand systems and the substrates which is involved for the borylation reactions are listed. Hence, we were interested by considering the fact that in NHC are very good sigma donor ligands, we could actually attain a better selectivity and efficiency for the borylation reaction. Hence, we begin our study with the um, NHC I mean, cobalt IMS2 Cl2 complex. Our reaction actually, uh, we have synthesized this compound by reacting cobalt Cl2 with uh, two equivalent of IMS ligand, which is the carbene ligand. This has been reported compound. We synthesized this and we took that as a catalyst. We have reacted with uh, uh, paramethoxychlorobenzene uh, uh, in the presence of B2PIN2. And we start to see the formation of um, uh, aryl boronate esters. We have done a plenty of solvents and base catalyst and temperature screening. And then we found that the best suitable condition for the aryl chloride borylation was using cobalt IMS to Cl2 as a catalyst, KOME as a base, and we used MTBA as a best solvent. This was, uh, this was uh, best solvent to give uh, excellent yield of aryl Bpin ester. After having the optimization, the aryl chloride borylation is very important as we know that the activation of carbon chlorine bond is quite uh, activation energy for the carbon chlorine bond is uh, quite higher than the bromine and the iodine. But there are also few examples reported in the literature for the aryl chloride borylation using palladium as a catalyst. And there is also a report with a copper iodide catalyst where they have shown that uh, aryl chloride using copper iodide and phosphine ligand gives this aryl boronate ester. And there are also metal free systems uh, which by which they achieve the uh, aryl chloride borylation. Uh, also, there is a specific example with the cobalt as a catalyst where they have gotten this um, aryl boronate ester with the aryl chloride as a substrate. However, uh, the, the ligand system which they have used is the ferrocenyl based typical ligand and also this method employed a methyl lithium as a reagent. Hence, our method was um, if, um, simple than the previously reported one uh, compared to the cobalt one. So we went, we went with the substrate scope of variety of aryl chlorides and here are some of the aryl chlorides uh, reported with an excellent yield. Electron withdrawing as well as electron releasing groups were well tolerated and the steric effects were not having much in, um, effect on the yield as well as we could achieve the diborylated product when we take a dichlorobenzene uh, upon uh, uh, while using the two equivalents of the porine reagent. 
and our method also were suitable for the heteroarene systems where we have achieved a very good yield of the aryl boronate ester since the chloride was achieved then we move, we went to uh, check the activity towards the aryl bromide aryl bromide also well tolerated and here are the substrate scope um, for the aryl bromide one as well as aryl iodide now uh, after having a substrate scope we thought um, what is the mechanism behind this activation what might be the active catalyst what is the first observation we noticed while doing the reaction is that the uh, when we put the reaction the cobalt ion has 2 cl2 that's uh, blue in color and towards the end of the reaction i mean the when when the reaction goes proceeds the you can see the color change from blue to green Uh, sorry blue to red then we thought that maybe the species is definitely there is a change in the oxidation state that species might be getting reduced so we assumed that that cobalt ims to cl2 is getting reduced into cobalt ims to cl where cobalt is in plus 1 oxidation state now um why this assumption also came in our mind is that there are some several reports where the ch borylation using cobalt as a catalyst is been reported they have also uh, explained that that the cycle might proceed via cobalt 1 to cobalt 3 oxidative addition reaction pathway hence uh, having this in mind we thought of synthesizing cobalt ims to cl as a Uh, catalyst then we took a, a reported procedure of preparing from cobalt pph3cl by adding two equivalent of ims we got this cobalt one species however we had some some problem in the getting a pure compound of this compound because of the uh, low yield and we found also difficulties in isolating i mean separating the pph3 with eliminated pph3 hence we adopted a different methodology and we found that this is a convenient approach for synthesizing a cobalt monochloride species by using a magnesium tonic in which we got the quantitative yield of um, uh, cobalt one species and which we used for our further reaction now we have this cobalt ims to cl we started the reaction for the Uh, para methoxy chlorobenzene under the same reaction condition we used cobalt 1 as a catalyst and surprisingly we also got a excellent yield of um, aryl boronate ester while using the cobalt ims to cl then we went back to the ligand ability that since the cobalt 1 species of nhc uh, cobalt 1 species gave an excellent yield we want to check whether is this this proceeding with the cobalt pph3 as a ligand as, as well however we only got 10% yield of that reaction now the next question arises that how does the reduction is happening in the uh, in uh, during the reaction we are taking cobalt ims to cl2 as a catalyst and what might be the reducing agent as we are also getting to see the color change during the reaction we started doing some uh, we we did some um, uh, stoichiometric reactions where we first take the catalyst and just added the base we have not observed any color change and the nmr is uh, there is no change in the nmr same was observed when only we took a boryl borane agent as a boron agent instead of base no uh, no change in the observation as well as the uh, boron and proton nmr however when we take uh when we took this uh, cobalt ims to cl2 and uh, base as well as b2 pin2 we found that the color changed to brown red and as well as we had seen the change in the nmr spectrum as you can see that the 11 boron nmr shows the peak at 21.3 which may be corresponding to the pepen ome and this was also further confirmed with the gc mass and the proton nmr analysis shows that the cobalt 1 species by by having the specific uh, uh, peak for the carbene ca hydrogen that at 105.65 ppm this indicates that the co cobalt 1 species is being formed during the reaction now um, which means that the it has been already repo well uh, reported that b2 pin2 can react with the base and forms an adduct 
So this adduct might be the uh, source of reduction, um, so helping the reduction of cobalt two to cobalt one. Then we further went on and added the uh, substrate to the reaction mixture, and then we again get to see the change in the color from red to green. And also we observed the peak for the cobalt methoxide alkoxide compound uh, in the proton and MR spectrum. So all this information, uh, we proposed a mechanism that might be the cobalt two uh, compound, uh, which is getting reduced into cobalt one with the help of uh, B2Pinto and KYME. And then which undergoes the uh, transmetallation reactions with forms the alkoxide compound. And then this, um, gives this cobalt boryl and further uh, cobalt boryl upon oxidative addition gives this cobalt three species and then reductive elimination might lead to the product formation and regenerate the catalyst. So after establishing a method for aryl chloride borylation, we were interested for the uh, uh, synthesis of alkyl boronic esters. And here is a little overview of the alkyl boronic ester synthesis. There are few, uh, there are several approaches uh, for the alkyl boronic esters, a synthesis of alkyl boronic esters. One can get it through the hydroboration of alkenes or via the um, hydroboration of alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compounds, or it can be through the CH activation of the alkyne, which is, um, which is actually a challenging one. And there are all, there is also another approach by which we can actually get an alkyl uh, alkyl boronate ester is through the alkyl halide as a substrate. The uh, the the there are reports that where, where alkyl chloride has been uh, used as a substrate and uh, in the presence of copper iodide as a catalyst, we can get alkyl boronate ester in good yield. It's not only copper, there are also few other metal atoms is being reported with the manganese, iron, nickel, copper, zinc, etc. So we were interested in uh, using cobalt as a catalyst for the alkyl boronate ester synthesis. Then we took the our same catalyst which we have used for the aryl chloride uh, borylation. We, uh, we started our reaction with um, alkyl chloride and then using the same CO2 uh, cobalt 2 as a catalyst. What we observe is the uh, only 36 percentage of the alkyl boronate esters. The rest of the product was come having some byproduct from as a homocouple product 9 percent and also the dehydrohalogen um, um, de um, hydrogenated product uh, in 19 percent. So um, this gave us uh, uh, the uh, th this clearly shows that cobalt two is might not uh, cobalt two might not be a good catalyst for the um, aryl halide alkyl halide borylation. Hence, we move on to uh, cobalt one species. When we used uh, cobalt one as a catalyst, we see this there is a quite improvement in the yield of the alkyl boronate esters. However, since the um, uh, synthesis of cobalt one species was uh, a bit um, complicated. We pro we adopted a strategy to pro uh, synthesize the in situ cobalt complex, which has been reported uh, by taking a cobalt PPS three um, Cl. You upon addition with NHC, we can prepare actually a cobalt um, NHC one species. So. We do not want to prepare, uh, I mean, we, as we, were, we had a problem in uh, preparing the cobalt one species, we adopted this methodology and we investigated several other NHC ligands. Uh, the optimization of using um, different NHC, we found that, <coughs> just, we found that, uh, uh, by, while using cobalt PPS3Cl as a catalyst, only 29% percentage, uh, percentage of the yield. But however, when we use IMS as a catalyst, we uh, ligand, when we got the 49% percentage of the yield. Uh, when we change the IMS to ICY, we could see uh, quite improvement in the yield and we could achieve 96% percentage of the alkyl boronate esters. And several screening went into uh, optimizing the reaction conditions. Then we found that cobalt PPS3Cl as a pre-catalyst with the help of NHC as a ligand and base, 
we could get um, ICY as a ligand, we could get 96% of the yield. We, we move on to a um, substrate scope where we, we could actually, um, achieve, we, we, we were able to achieve several uh, primary and secondary alkyl bromides in a uh, efficient way. Um, uh, as, you, as you can see here that uh, there are many acyclic alkyl boronate esters where uh, gave, gave very good yield of the boron, uh, alkyl boronate esters. Also, the ether linkage, ether, ether, the substrates having ether linkage were also well tolerated. And also the um, heterocycle units were well tolerated with the system. When we move on to a secondary alkyl bromides, the, the yield was uh, good with some systems, but uh, the substrate scope, scope was not very effective. However, we, uh, we could actually get the very good yield for the secondary alkyl bromide where we have the additional functional group of alkene where we could selectively achieve the um, CX bond activation rather than the, uh, the addition across the double bond. And when we took the tertiary alkyl bromides, the yields were very low. Uh, when also when we tried the when we tried to implement this same optimized condition for the alkyl chloride the yields were again low hence we decided that uh, to improve the yield of the alkyl chloride we again went for an optimization for the alkyl chloride and uh, there are very why we were interested in alkyl chloride so there were very very few reports on the alkyl chloride uh, borylation the one uh, with the copper chloride and the, there are few more with the manganese and the nickel as a catalyst. When we, um, uh, we continued our reactions for the alkyl chloride, we chosen one chloro three phenylpropane as a substrate. And we thought of now changing the um, diborane reagent to get the activity. Uh, interestingly, we found that when we use B2 Neo2 as a boron source, we could able to get the uh, 76 percentage of the uh, alkyl boronate esters. Then uh, with that optimized condition, we used B2 Neo2 as a borane reagent. We went on and uh, we had a, a, a screen, I mean, we, we, several substrates were examined and the, the substrate scopes are listed here. Again, we have a problem with the tertiary alkyl chloride, same as like of a tertiary alkyl bromide. So we, it is actually a challenging challenge for us that uh, to borylate the tertiary halide. Um, so again, um, uh, uh, here as we, we, we were again interested in the mechanistic study, how this reaction would proceed. Um, since we are actually preparing an in situ catalyst, we were much more interested to know the species formed in situ. Uh, hence, we did a stoichiometric reaction by taking the cobalt one phosphine complex and then reacted with the two equivalent of uh, uh, N-hydrocyclic carbon. This is the reaction condition we used. Um, we expect that uh, that the two NHC would be coordinated to the cobalt. Um, also, we were actually, we, we want to look into the additives uh, like uh, um, a different one. Um, what is the, uh, why well, there is a change in the, um, the reactivity, I mean, there is a change in the yield when we use the different types of ligand system. And here is the list which shows that only ICY uh, gives the very good yield when we use the, when we use uh, that as a ligand. Now, um, we went on and uh, we actually uh, again uh, look at the equivalence, how much it required. Um, uh, we could able to reduce the five mole percent of the equivalent to the two mole percent of the equivalent. There was uh, uh, slightly, I mean, there is not much, uh, uh, we could still achieve the higher yield of the alkyl boronate esters. Since ICY was uh, giving a better yield with uh, compared to the other N-hydrocyclic ligands, uh, we thought that uh, the, the cobalt, as we expected, that might be the two N-hydrocyclic unit my, coordinated to the cobalt atom. Or we went back to the literature and found that there is also a compound uh, reported with the cobalt ICY3Cl as a 
uh, ICY3 with uh, three, co three ligands of the uh, um, ICY coordinated to the cobalt. So we I prepared this one by the uh, different method and then we employed this as a catalyst to, to find it out whether this species is, might be forming in the catalytic reaction, which may, ca which may catalyze the reaction. However, we did not uh, get a improve, uh, very good yield. We just got only 28 percentage of the yield. So all these reactions clearly shows that uh, there is no three uh, NHC ligands coordinated to the cobalt. That and we were also have we we also had difficulties in characterizing through any phosphorus NMR any coordination of the phosphorus is there with the cobalt or not. Hence, we assume that. Um, the active catalyst might have the two units of ICY or one unit of the phosphine, but still it is under the question of uh, the active catalyst present in this reaction. And we went on uh, to the uh, uh, radical scavenger reaction in order to find it out the that any radical species of uh, alkyl, al alkyl, alkyl radical species is forming. Uh, when we did this reaction with uh, uh, anthracene, 910 dihydroanthracene, we found that uh, there is a decrease in the yield and also the tempo had affected the yield. And we also noticed an interesting observation when we carry out this reaction uh, in toluene while doing the solvent screening, we observed the formation of the benzylic borylated product in 24% yield. Hence, we um, wondered that this might be the radical mechanism. Then the next one we proceeded that we did not add any substrate and we thought that maybe benzyl radical is forming that hence we got this benzyl boronate tester. We used only toluene as a solvent as well as the substrate. We carry out the same reaction under the optimized condition. However, in this case, we have not found a benzyl boronate tester even in trace amount. So this uh, may uh, give uh, may uh, tell us that the the aryl alkyl uh, radical might generate in the reaction, which actually helps in the formation of the benzyl radical during the course of the reaction. Uh, so that lead to the benzyl boronate ester. Now uh, we also uh, want to confirm the radical involvement with the trapping reagent like. Uh, we have used uh, uh, six bromohexene, and uh, uh, which actually gave exclusively the cyclized products clearly indicates the radical involvement in the reaction. And also the ring opening reaction of um, uh, a methyl bro bromomethyl cyclohexene, uh, cyclopropene propane uh, uh, gave the ring open product. So this all uh, the uh, mechanistic study indicate the presence of radical alkyl radical species in the reaction mixture. Um, based on the experimental evidences, we here propose the possible catalytic cycle for the alkyl halide borylation where the cobalt one species might react with alkyl halide and generate an alkyl species which further undergoes an oxidative addition, gives this cobalt-3, and then uh, the uh, transmetallation with the uh, uh, borane reagent gives the cobalt boryl species, which undergoes the reductive elimination to regenerate the catalyst. Now, uh, as I mentioned, there are a few other ways of preparing the alkyl boronate esters. So we were uh, we were also interested in the hydroboration reactions of uh, alkyl boron. Um, I mean, uh, hydroboration of alkenes, which might also lead to an alkyl boronate ester. So, hydroboration is a, a very well known and established reaction, and even uh, transition metal catalyzed to alkene, alkene hydroboration is for the selective hydroborations are uh, uh, reported well, uh, particularly using the rhodium as a catalyst where uh, the HB cat is being used as a borane reagent, and they have, a, 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 I mean, hydroboration of alkene was achieved in an excellent yield. Also, there are a different way where one can use diboron as a boron reagent and the proton source, the proton source like methanol as a solvent that, that also lead to an alkyl boronate esters via, via the 
uh, transmetallation reactions. There are plenty of examples with the different metal atoms for both these approaches. And in most of the cases, uh, the uh, selectivity for Markovnikov addition is very um, limited. So uh, here we actually um, performed a reaction of uh, um, vinyl arene in the presence of HB pin. And this time we actually chosen the cobalt one as a catalyst um, when we ca um, cobalt IMS to CL uh, as we could able to prepare this one in a plenty of uh, amount and we could store it. We choose this as a catalyst and Interestingly, we obtained a, a Markovnik of selective product in a good amount, which leads to the branched um, boronate esters. And the optimization shows that, um, sorry, uh, this should be THF. In optimization shows that in the presence of THF, we could get the 97% of yield and the selectivity for the Markovnik of product was higher. Here is the substrate scope where uh, using the optimized condition, we used a uh, three mole percentage of the catalyst and no base is being involved in this reaction. Uh, we, could, uh, we, we, we were able to achieve the uh, styrenes, uh, different types of uh, styrenes having um, um, branched alkyl boronate. I mean, we, could get, we, we were able to get the branched alkyl boronate esters in very good yield. And also the electron donating substrates were well tolerated. Uh, what, is, uh, what is the in, um, uh, interesting one we found is that we using our system, the sterically hindered alkane also were, uh, gave a very good yield with a good selectivity. As you can see that uh, one one disubstituted alkene gave an excellent yield. And also the one one two disubstituted alkene gave an, a very good yield of the tertiary alkyl boronate esters, which are the uh, quite um, uh, difficult to achieve by the CX activation reactions. And we also explored the internal alkenes where uh, we the same selectivity was maintained with the higher yield. And however, uh, we found that when we used aliphatic alkene as a substrate, we could only get the anti-aromatic, anti-Markovnikov product rather than the Markovnikov product. And when we used a substrate um, where the possibility of isomerization, we actually observed the uh, uh, branched, uh, yield, branched alkyl boronate ester in a good yield rather than the uh, uh, terminal alkyl boronate esters. So all this, uh, with all this one, we continue to proceed with the um, mechanistic study and the involvement of the uh, catalyst in this reaction. When we did stoichiometric reactions, we found that uh, the, the alkene does not react with uh, either of HP pin or with the catalyst. However, when we took all the three, alkene and catalyst HP pin, we could see the boron NMR a peak at 33.8, which is corresponding to the product, and also along with that, the peak at 3.9 ppm which shows that something uh, is happening in during the reaction. Hence, uh, we did, as we did not observe any reaction between the catalyst and the uh, alkene, we went on to the stoichiometric reaction of catalyst with boron reagent. And interestingly, when we take uh, 0.5, M, 0.5, milli, 0 0.05 millimole of both these reagents, we get to see the peak at 3.9 ppm in the boron NMR. And addition of uh, another equivalent of uh, uh, HB pin reagent to the same reaction mixture gave peak at uh, 28.6, which is uh, corresponding to the HB pin. And further addition of alkene into the same reaction mixture gave the product and the 3.9 ppm peak was still persisting. So this, this uh, uh, made us to think that this may not be a transient species because we get to see the uh, 3.9 ppm throughout the reactions. But we wonder that whether this may be a catalytic active species. Hence, uh, the boron NMR was handy 
and also we were uh, we had carried out this reaction in a higher millimole scale when we did this cobalt uh, uh, one chloride cobalt one chloride and react with the uh, hp pin in an equivalent amount we were lucky enough to get the crystal structure of the um, product which actually corresponds to the 3.9 ppm where uh, what the 3.9 ppm peak is corresponds to this one where the uh, intramolecular ch activation of one of the mesethyl group attached to the carbene is uh, happen so um, the boron at uh, the uh, four coordinated center gives the peak at 3.9 ppm and taking this as a catalyst we performed the same reaction but we did not even observe a trace amount of product which clearly shows that this is a catalytically inactive species forming during uh, forming the uh, course of the reaction and this is also further confirmed by the mass analysis now the question remains what happens if the one of the nhc comes out and forming an adduct with the hp pin what happened to the rest of the cobalt present in the reaction mixture does it form the cobalt imes cl unit and we were uh, it um, it were uh, the expected uh, cobalt imes cl were not uh, able to we were not able to isolate it and even we could not also confirm it through any of the methods then we uh, increase keep on increasing the equivalence of hp pin to find it out what are the species forming during the course of the reaction we when we use um, two equivalence of hp pin we could see the uh, formation of cobalt three species which is co cobalt boryl and which was been confirmed by the uh, mass analysis which shows the formation of compound 2 in the reaction mixture we had also carried out some kinetic experiments to find out the role of alkene as well as the hp pin uh, we found that the first order reaction for uh, uh, respective to the catalyst as well as with hp pin but the C, um, the alkene does not uh, play any role in the rate determining steps so um, now uh, we were wondering okay how, what is the origin for the marconic of selectivity as i mentioned that which is not new there are several catalysts which has been reported for the marconic of selectivity and it has been reported for the rhodium system that where the marconic of selectivity is achieved via the benzylic intermediate so um, the selectivity is actually controlling by the ben phenyl unit present in the substituents that's one reason we are getting marconic of selectivity for the um, uh, only for the phenyl substituted alkene and uh, the, we we actually got an argon anti marconic of selectivity for the uh, aliphatic alkenes and also the there are several other factors which involve the controls the selectivity of the marconic of addition and based on all the other factors we proposed a mechanism where we were uh, confirmed that the first step the one of the imes ligand attached to the cobalt is getting eliminated and forming an adduct with hp pin which might lead to the solvent coordinated imes cocl and further this reacts with the hp pin might produce this uh, cobalt three species which were confirmed by the hrms analysis and then the alkyne alkene coordination is possible and the alkene coordinator which is actually forms this benzylic intermediate and then gives the uh, reductive elimination of the branched alkyl boronate esters in case of alkyl boronates there is also possible possibility that this has been um, uh, inserted between the cobalt uh, hydride bond and then gives this marconic of addi addition product okay with, with all with all uh, this uh, currently we are also proceeding with the uh, different types of reactions for using the nhc cobalt complex and here are some of the unpublished res results which we have um using an nhc co cobalt complex we actually could able to achieve a one to hydroboration of a variety of pyridine and quinoline substrates 
and as well as we extended the uh, catalytic application of NHC cobalt species to the aldehyde one. And uh, here also we have got an interesting result of the diborylation of aldehyde, which are uh, currently under process. So with this, um, I would uh, conclude um, that we, 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 we have shown that NHC cobalt complex can be an efficient catalyst for a variety of transformations, including aryl halide borylation, aryl chloride, aryl halide, and aryl uh, alkyl halide borylation, as well as the Markovnikov selective addition of hydroboration of alkenes. And also we do have some ongoing research on, we will continue the chemistry of NHC cobalt for the variety of transformation. With this, I would like to uh, thank uh, all my group members uh, who had put their effort